there's anything you can say to a young girl that uh, was in the same you know, position that you were in back in 1988, what would that be? I would just say, you will never regret giving birth to your child, whether you place it for adoption or you parent. Uh, you, will always, you will always regret an abortion. Okay. Are you ready? I stand here today on September 1st, uh, 23 years ago today. I walked into these doors of Planned Parenthood. I uh, had an abortion. My plan was never to have an abortion. When I found out I was pregnant, I went to a family doctor and he showed me pictures of couples who wanted to adopt a newborn baby. And I decided then that I, I wanted to place my baby for adoption. I told my family, I told my parents, my friends, that that was my plan, uh, to place the baby for adoption. I, I didn't know at that point how far along I was. Uh, earlier in May of that year, 1988, I uh, was in school. I went to a Planned Parenthood in Fort Dodge, Iowa to get birth control pills. Uh, I went through that whole summer uh, not knowing. I, I never had a period. I didn't know where I was at. Little did I know that I had gotten pregnant almost immediately after starting the pills. I. Planned Parenthood um, never told me how far along I was when I I called the day before I went in to have the abortion. They asked me how far along I was, and I said I thought I was three months. Uh, they said, you need to get in right away. Uh, they told me to come in the next day, which was September 1st, 1988 and they told me to bring $200 cash. I uh, wasn't with the father anymore, so I didn't know where I was gonna get the cash. I didn't tell my parents, didn't tell anyone. I just thought this would be a quick solution to my problem. Didn't think about the humanity of the baby or even, I mean, I didn't know how far along I was, so. I, I took my textbooks back to the bookstore to get the cash. Uh, a friend of mine who gave me the number to Planned Parenthood, she had also had a couple of abortions here at this clinic. So uh, I know, I think she wanted to try to help me out uh, or she didn't want me to place my baby for adoption. I'm not sure. So she drove me to the clinic. I, I remember going in these doors. I paid my $200 right at the cashier. I sat around the waiting room for a long time. Um, they, they did let me uh, go walk around. There was a corner grocery store right down here. It's not there anymore. And I remember having a mozzarella stick and chocolate milk. That was my craving in my pregnancy. And that, but they told us not to eat before the procedure. So I was afraid I would get in trouble for eating. But I came back. I don't know if it was because it was a last minute. I just called the day before that they had me wait all day. But then they finally uh, took me into the counseling office and the gal said, um, you seem sad, and I, I started to cry, and she handed me a little white pill and said, take this, it'll make you feel better. Uh, I assume it was a tranquilizer. By the effect it had, I was sleeping in the waiting room. Uh, my friend said I was snoring. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember how I got on the table, mm -hmm. but when the 
procedure started in the vacuum. It was, it was just the most excruciating physical pain. Obviously emotional too, but physically I felt like they were ripping all of my internal organs out. I was screaming. There were people came in from nowhere to just get in my face and say, take deep breaths, you know, just take deep breaths, you know, keeping me from screaming. And, and it was over with and I was in the recovery room, which was on the other side of the building. And we were lined up, probably three or four of us who had just had abortions. Uh, and I, I was sick, sick to my stomach. I, I was like vomiting um, and I was afraid I would get in trouble for eating. It, there was a, a gal, I don't know if she was a nurse, she was just sitting at a table, like a fold up table, watching us, um, almost like a school monitor. And um, you know, she, she just sat there while I was sick. The only sympathy I got were from the other girls who just aborted their babies were like, oh, poor thing. Um, they were actually comforting me. And while the employees just sat there. Uh, I was I was still in, in excruciating pain when they let me go. And the friend who brought me there, um, I have a Stick, I had a stick shift. Um, she said she didn't know how to drive a stick shift and made me drive home. But anyway, that's besides the point. I I'd repressed. I mean, I just wanted to forget that that abortion even happened. But uh, right away, I mean, I didn't have the money to buy back my textbook, so I had to drop that semester. I, um, you know, my relationships, my dad was devastated that I had had an abortion. I, uh, you know, years later, even while trying to forget the abortion, I would have dreams. I had a dream where I was driving uh, in my car and um, a family was crossing the sidewalk a little girl, um, I was about ready to hit the little girl, and she looked me in the eyes, and I could tell that it was my aborted daughter, what she would have been five at the time. Uh, and I just say to people who are for abortion, you can't escape your dreams. Um, you know, your conscience is gonna catch up to you. And God was definitely working in me. I hadn't given my life to God then, but I uh, finally accepted Christ as my Savior and His forgiveness. Uh, and that dream that was terrifying is actually comforting now uh, because I know I have a girl in heaven. I know there's hope and hope for all the babies that have been aborted here that we will meet them in heaven. Consequences. Uh, I'm not sure if my abortion was botched, but I had my next pregnancy. I had an abruption of the pl placenta with my daughter. Uh, I was that two weeks before my due date. I had severe bleeding, which had to be uh, borne by C-section, and. I had another pregnancy two years after that. It was an ectopic pregnancy. And I know statistics show that you're fi around 50% more likely to have an ectopic pregnancy if you have an abortion. Uh, that's, that's not even something my OBGYN will tell people. Uh, uh, I also, I had a miscarriage too after that. And I had my son, he was, um, I did have premature labor. Uh, I know statistically speaking, that's, that's common for people who've had an abortion. Um, in both of my pregnancies, I 
never dilated past one centimeter. I know your cervix can be damaged from the dilating rods mm -hmm. that they insert. Uh, and yeah, even if all of this never happened, I, you know, your right to privacy that Planned Parenthood, you know, tells you about. I with my daughter, when I had the abruption of the placenta, I was with my mother-in-law, and she had to take me to the hospital right away. Until my husband got there, the nurse, she didn't know I had ever had an abortion. And I didn't want her to know. But the nurse was there, and I was terrified that the nurse would ask my history. Uh, you just can never escape it. Yeah. And I, actually 10 years ago, I called Planned Parenthood, looking for my rec my medical records. Uh, I, I couldn't find them. And I, I talked to a manager, and he he was looking for my name, looking on the computer. He said he couldn't find my name in the computer. He said, well, if I was a client there in 1988, would I be on the computer? And he said, yes, you should be. And then he started reading all the names. My maiden name was Tierney. He was reading the names around what my name should have been. That I guess their right to privacy is supposed to be it's supposed to be private to you, but not to other people. <laughs> so I, I never got my medical records from them. Um, did your parents know that you were pregnant? Yes, they okay. did. Um, and you had other people who were counseling, giving you other options, choices? I, I did. I, you know, the friend was saying abortion, mm -hmm. um, doctor was saying adoption, you know, I, and then I became confused about who to listen to. And the, uh, the counseling room, when you came in, what was the purpose of the counseling room? What were they supposed to be doing in there with you? I didn't know what they were supposed to be doing. I just, I knew they were going to get rid of my problem. Okay. So, I mean, naively, I just. Did they talk about any, uh, did they give you any information as far as potential side effects or um, no. problems that could occur? No. All I remember is her saying, you look sad and giving me the pill.